Hello my creative earthlings, it's Mika. Welcome to another video. Today we're talking about adult coloring books. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you must have been living under a rock because these things have been extremely popular lately and the variety that's out there in the market of the different designs and different themes of books gives you anxiety just trying to pick what, which one you like. Yeah. It is said that coloring is a very good anti-stress exercise, although based to my own opinion, I would say that effects may vary from person to person. I mean, I tend to get obsessive, so for me it was like, this page needs to be finished today, and I, then I would spend like 12 hours on a single page and the world would, wouldn't matter anymore. Like, I know. Crazy people problems. But despite all that, I do believe that it's a great hobby to have and you can create some amazing art. So in this video, we will talk about some basic techniques about coloring books. So if that sounds interesting to you, keep on watching. The very first thing you need to do is to select a book that you enjoy looking at. These things take forever to finish. One book may take you to your golden years, no joke. So better be something you like. I have a Harry Potter coloring book, which I was lucky enough to get it as a birthday present. My friends know me too well. Your second choice would be the type of medium. Different mediums will give you different results. You can choose between coloring pencils, which is the most common one, gel pens, markers maybe, although it is not really recommended, even watercolors. The type of paper, the thickness of the paper will be the main factor that will determine what type of medium is best for your book. Um, I mean, for example, watercolor requires uh, more thicker paper and still you may need to keep the colors on the dry side. A tip would be to test on the last page to see what type of medium works first, best for your book because you will spend a lot of time on one page and it will be a shame to see it being torn apart just on bad choices of markers. Gel pens can be used to color the entire design or just use them to add shimmer or a little bit of glitter. That's pretty fun too. A tip would be to keep a single piece of paper in between the pages so when you're applying pressure, the ink from the design on the back won't transfer to the next page. And also a piece of paper underneath your hand so when you're coloring, you won't be smearing what you have already colored. The most common choice of medium is coloring pencils. You can find them anywhere for pretty cheap and even if you're not an artist, you can create some amazing shadows and highlights very, very easily. And a $3 set can give you equally amazing results as to a more expensive set and even if you don't have that many colors to work with, um, you can apply different pressure and that will give different tones, different shades of the same color. So I wouldn't get too caught up on brands. Now let's talk about some techniques about coloring pencils. Number one is when you're using a single color. The amount of pressure you're applying will give you different shades of the same color. So you can definitely create shadows with just one single pencil. Working in a circular motion will help you blend a bit more nicely and also the more sharpened the pencil is, the more dramatic the effect because a fine tip helps it go into the skin of the paper. The second technique is when you're using two or more colors. The darker the color, the more dramatic the effect. The colors can be from the same color family or completely opposite. The third technique is about the white pencil. Now the white pencil, what it does, it blends. It helps the pigments of the pencils blend nicely onto the paper and it covers any mistakes, any harsh lines you may have gotten. It will give you a nicer blend overall. And another thing you'll have to keep in mind is what color the paper is because coloring pencils will appear differently when you're coloring on white paper versus to brown paper. White pencil looks amazing on brown paper. And the most important thing you have to remember is that there is absolutely no wrong way of doing this. You do whatever feels good to you. Go outside the lines, why not? 
Lastly, I know this is a very solitary activity and no matter how zen you can make this experience, it's always nice to share with fellow creators. So take a picture of your art, share it on social media, send it to me, you know, I'd love to see it. So thank you so much guys for watching. If you're new here, just click the subscribe button. What this button does uh, is free, first of all, and it will notify you for the next video. So what are you waiting for? Just click it. And if you want to get updates about what's going on about this channel during the week, you can follow me on my social media. I am at Mika Sailor on Instagram and Twitter and the rest of them will be in the description down below. And I'd love to interact with you. I'd love to talk to you. So go ahead, interact with me, please. If I have forgotten or missed anything, just leave me a comment down below, let me know. And thanks again for watching. I will see you very, very soon. Bye, bye. Ah, <laughs> ah.